since the first few Aggies started school here some 134 years ago, this remarkable university has emphasized the development of a student's character as much as his or her intellect. As a result, Aggies have played an essential role in our state's development. It served, or I should say they have served with distinction in our nation's ongoing defense and freedom of the world. And today we are gathered to resurrect an essential Aggie tradition that connects the students of this and future generations with the long maroon line that stretches back into the myths of time. For generations, this path formed a vital artery across the campus and was well worn by the tread of countless senior boots. Although the military walk physically ended at the dining hall, in a spiritual sense, it actually continued across the country to military training facilities of every service onto foreign soil where Aggies fought. Off time died in the name of freedom. You know, the names of Aggie heroes are too voluminous to list at this moment, but they include folks like Billy McKenzie, class of 19. 44, who fought with Patton's mighty Third Army. He recalled until his death just this last year the human tragedy uncovered when he was one of the first American officers to walk into Buchenwald. Liberating those tormented and decimated individuals. Bill is one of the countless uh, Aggies who risked their lives for others' freedom. In doing so, our fellow alums have left blood on the ground in places like Corregidor, Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Their legacy is countless people freed from oppression be it the scourge of the Axis powers, the threat of the communist rule, or the abuse of a twisted tyrant like Saddam Hussein. Because we live in a fallen world, we will never see the end of war. And we will never assume that the next despotic regime we topple will be the last. Therefore, we must continue to foster a culture of leadership so pervasive that it seeps from every mortar of this building into the students who reside here. Some of those students who yell themselves hoarse today at the football game will someday don the uniform of their country, while others will accept the challenge of leadership in their homes, in their businesses, in their communities. Regardless of their path, they will serve with distinction if they embrace the Aggie way. To properly equip them for these challenges, we must continue to celebrate those virtues that set this university apart, venerate these flesh and blood examples who went before, so that today's students may correlate them with their own lives. You know, when we talk about the flesh and the blood examples, there are few finer than native Texan Earl Rudder whose statue stands at the south end of this walk. He is spoken of with reverence, not only on this campus, but in ranger, army ranger lore. He is remembered by those who he liberated in northern France. When Lieutenant Colonel Rudder led his troops up the cliffs of Pointe de Hoc, in that fiery confusion of the Normandy landing. He survived multiple wounds, yet he persevered, helped establish a beachhead through which flowed a mighty force that liberated Europe. 
it is fitting that as Rudder and his men scaled those impossible cliffs, the battleship Texas was cruising offshore in the English Channel. She poured some 255 14-inch rounds over Point de Hoc into German positions in just 34 minutes. Interestingly enough, a member of the 5th Ranger Battalion who directed that day's naval gunfire, who happens to be with us here today, wasn't regular Army. As a matter of fact, he wasn't Army at all. He was a Navy man by the name of Lieutenant J.G. Benjamin Berger. I suppose Navy brass just couldn't quite trust the Army to call in fire on their own positions. So they integrated officers like Ben Berger into assault units to fight alongside their Army counterparts and coordinate that bombardment of key targets. Lieutenant J.G. Berger won a silver star for his action and accuracy that day. And I suppose he, just as much as General Rudder and those Rangers helped kick a hole in the German defenses. And I suspect if Colonel Rudder was here today, he'd be mighty proud uh, to join us in dedicating this new beautiful military walk. But as we know, he left us some 40 years ago. But in his place, we are proud to welcome a man who fought by his side, who is with us here today, Lieutenant Benjamin Berger. Thank you. Ben is here uh, with his lovely wife, Ray. Uh, they came from California, and I want to take a moment and just say thank you to the Brandeises for uh, furnishing the, uh, the transportation here, Charles, and, and uh, his beautiful wife, Tanya. Brandeis, thank you all for coming and being with us today as well. You know, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a big believer in coincidences, and I don't think it was a coincidence that 10 years ago, Tom, we were standing on the, uh, the point on the sixth day of June of 2000 when we met Ben, along with my dad, my dad who happens to be here. Uh, th there's a number of, of, of individuals I'd asked to come back today for specific reasons. Uh, uh, during that, that same period of time, my dad was uh, um, a member of the of the 95th bomb group of, uh, as they flew 35 missions over Nazi hell Germany dad I want to say thank you for your service and thank you for being here today we uh, we also have an Aggie with us today uh, class of 1945 David Strauss David was at uh, uh, at Okinawa in 1945. David, if you would take just a moment so we can properly say thank you. A few of you, I'm sure, if not all of you, have seen uh, a, a HBO series that uh, I think one of the best that, uh, that I have I've watched in some period of time called The Pacific. And uh, in that uh, series, you see a, a young man uh, by the name of R.V. Bergen, uh, who was a martyr man uh, at uh, Gloucester, he was at Peleliu, and then he was at Okinawa. R.V., would you stand up and let us uh, say thank you for your service, sir. A great, um, a, a great story. I might add a, a best-selling author as well. He, he wrote a book uh, of, of those uh, period of time called Islands of the Damned. And, and one other uh, devil dog that I want to take an opportunity uh, as this reaches out across generations and uh, Donovan Campbell is with us today and, and Donovan thank you for being here, a United States Marine officer, infantry officer who served in Ramadi and uh, a, I might add a, a best-selling author as well. 
uh, Joker one and a great piece of work that, that you did with that, uh, Donovan. So um, I think it is very fitting today that uh, we have these individuals here. It is fitting that we're standing on this piece of history, a place where Aggies have trod, where history has been made. And it is today that um, we say thank you to that great generation that served. Uh, the men represented by Ben Berger and so many of those who are not here today because they gave their todays for our tomorrows. And as a token of appreciation, Ben, if, if you would come, please, uh, you and Ray, I'd like for you to uh, um, take something home from Texas and, and in recognition of what uh, you accomplished. And uh, I ask the, uh, the USS Texas still floats. Matter of fact, she's the only one still left to float. Uh, in uh, the San Jacinto battleground, and I asked the guys to oh fly a Texas flag over the uh, USS Texas one more time, oh, and looks like it's got a little rust on it. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, to, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, if you will join me in thanking Ben and all of those great heroes of the greatest generation for their service to our country. Thank you so much. We'll get it home for you. You don't worry about it. You know, I think it is fitting for us to remember the past as uh, it foretells the future. So as we dedicate this military walk to honor Aggies, those great warriors of the past, the present, and the future, we do so in hopes of a lasting peace, but in anticipation of future conflict. Here on this day of remembrance as we recall the lives lost in 9-1-1. We know that strife is never far away, even in our most tranquil times. As they have throughout our school's history, leaders trained on this campus will lead the fight for freedom. They will defend the downtrodden no matter where duty calls. And to them, we say God bless you and through them, may God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Thank you.